Welcome back to SolidWorks Live in the 3D Experience Playground here at 3D Experience World 2020. I want to thank uh, Sam just a moment ago for that great opportunity to chat with him. Now I'm here with Eric Haddad. Welcome, hey. Eric. Thanks hey, for thanks, a lot, thanks for yeah. joining us here. Thank this morning has been all about community, innovation, education, uh -huh. and obviously when we look at what you're doing, you're really involved with the kind of the community out there through a unique format that I think a lot of people are familiar with. Uh -huh. You're a content creator on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yep, that's great. Tell us a little bit about 3D Aero Ventures and kind of what, what you're doing there. Yeah, so I, I established 3D Aero Ventures just last year. Um, kind of the biggest goal with it is just to, to try to inspire people to like not let go of the hobbies they had as a kid, and like yeah. embrace their inner child and kind of keep playing. Um, I know that sounds a little bit silly, but I kind of I've always embraced kind of my inner child, and so um, I do that through a passion that I had as a kid, as a 12-year-old, um, all the way through now. I'm 35, using RC airplanes, and uh, now the technology has just changed in, in different ways to build them. So I'm using what I have skills in CAD and 3D printing in order to build the planes, and kind of showing people how I do that and lessons learned with other failures along the way and stuff like that. So. Sure. So let's go back. You said you got started, your interest and passion into <clears throat> RC planes started when you were 12 years old. Yeah. What, what, what was that genesis? What really drove you to get involved in that? So even before that, I was always into planes. Okay. There's a picture of me as a two-year-old just like laying on the floor of try pretending to fly. And um, I asked my dad when I was turning 12 if I could get an RC model for my birthday. And he said, yeah. And he dove into the hobby with me. He'd never done it before either, and so uh, he was that way with me and my brothers. Just He would just kind of dive into what we were interested in and support our hobbies. Um, and so literally from the age of 12 to 18 before I left for college, almost every Saturday we'd go out from 8 to noon, and there's a flying field where we, we grew up and go flying together. So. What a cool a opportunity. Cool, yeah, cool way to connect with my dad. So. so back then, you and your father, you were buying commercial off-the-shelf RC yeah. planes, putting them together. Yeah, or, so um, they made, you know, still back then, but they were made from wood covered in kind of an iron-on film. And you could buy some that were already put together. You just have to glue a few pieces together. So that's how we got started. But then also, he, my dad was awesome at building, so he'd do a lot of the building. Um, but literally, you'd get a pile of sticks and some ribs cut out. Um, on balsa wood and, and he would build them from kits as well on plans and okay. I'd help him a little bit with that but um, yeah and so now being able to just 3D print the parts is a, a totally new way Pretty of doing unreal. it. unreal. Yeah it's cool. <laughs> so how do we go from being you know an enthusiastic 12 year old uh -huh. who's interested in this to today where we see something like this. Obviously <laughs> your uh, 3D Aero Ventures is a passion of yours, but mm -hmm. you have a you have a real life yeah. uh, th thing that yeah, you have exactly. to do, right? Yeah, so I built the CAD and 3D printing skills in school. That's kind of when I first was introduced to SolidWorks and some other CAD programs. Um, so graduate school of manufacturing engineering, and but I have I'm kind of left and right brain balance, so I like to work a lot of creativity into what I'm doing. Um, so my minor was in art and design, so I do a lot of CAD design. Um, through my manufacturing engineering classes and use CAD in order to, you know, before building something physically for an art installation or an art project, I design yep. it all in CAD and, and be able to figure it out first digitally. And then my first job actually out of grad school was um, with a large jewelry manufacturer in Texas and in product development, transitioning products from concept design into manufacturing. So it was a really unique application for SolidWorks. Um, and taught us to how to have an, taught me at least how to have an eye for detail. Transitioning something that an artist designed and wanted to maintain all that detail once you get into a manufacturing environment. Okay. Um, and so having that blend of art and technology has really helped me along the way in starting my own business as a product development consultant. Um, so that's how I transitioned into kind of doing my own thing. And now even further transition, I'm always kind of looking to I want my work to be something where I enjoy the process a ton, not just the result. Sure. And so I'm getting to the point now where like I have a ton of energy behind this just because I enjoy the process so much. It's not just getting the plane created. Exactly. It's the whole process of designing it. Yeah. Man we'll call it manufacturing it, yeah. using, you know, really state of the art tools to mm -hmm. get there. So, you know, with your access to the tools, you've basically yep. been able to energize this passion that yeah. you have there yeah. and this isn't like any plane i've ever seen yeah. so tell us <laughs> about a few of the details here so you, you you go through this uh whole process and mm -hmm. you've come up with this really unique aircraft yeah so this 
this wing configuration. I'm not the inventor of this configuration. There aren't any really scale aircraft or full scale aircraft that are flying with this kind of wing. Um, I've seen a few people that are starting to build some home built ones, but okay. so it's called a box wing or some people call it a continuous wing. I call it an infinity wing because I think it sounds cooler. Yeah, it's like a sure. never ending wing. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a it provides a lot of structural integrity having the wings connected like this and then aerodynamically what happens on the wingtips of a standard wing is what's called a wingtip vortices and so it creates a lot of drag yeah and so these this blended kind of wingtip design helps minimize that All right. and allows the plane to fly very efficiently so, so it's a really like great a, flyer almost like the tips you'll see on a commercial aircraft now where that's they have why the they flare put those are called winglets state. yeah, yeah the so winglets they're trying handle. to minimize it's it's the way the air is flowing over the wing when it's Air's trying to kind of roll over the wingtip, and it creates this vortice coming off yep. the, the wingtip. So those little winglets help prevent that from happening. And the same concept we're seeing this right here. This is just taking it to another that, level yeah. where it's like it's 100% continuous. So. You think someday we'll see commercial aircraft? Maybe. I don't know. It'd be design? cool. I, yeah. think, I think it's really efficient. I'm not an aeronautical engineer sure. or you know an aerodynamics expert, so I'm going a little bit on intuition here. But... Um, it flies. So. Sure. So tell us about this process. So when you embarked on creating this, did you mm -hmm. know right from the beginning that you were going to be looking at an additive manufacturing or 3D printing process to create that? That was like yes. set from the yes. front? Yeah. So we, uh, we just had Sam on here. He talked about designing for additive manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine that when you went through this design process, there were a lot of considerations that you for made sure. knowing that you were going to be 3D yeah. printing this, right? Yeah. And I'm not, I don't want to act like I'm the one who... In, and it's the first person 3D printing a remote control sure. plane. Like, there's another company out there, 3D Lab Print. They've been selling them for a couple of years. Anybody can go on and buy the the digital files. And but there aren't a lot of people designing them themselves. Um, so the time put into just getting kind of the outer shell designed is the quickest part in CAD. It's the minutia detail of okay, how do we design a, a rib structure on the inside that's 3D printable and will add strength to the part, but keeping it really lightweight. And then alignment aids, so when you glue everything together, they're perfectly aligned. And so there's a ton of detail in there that you have to consider that everything's self-supporting as it's printing on a 3D printer. Okay. Um, so, yeah, having that kind of forethought is takes time. But the cool thing with something like SolidWorks is I've got it all figured out digitally. And then when I print the first one physically, everything fit together perfectly. So I'm not experimenting a lot physically. It's already done digitally. You're basically creating the digital twin in here, looking at where the challenge is going to be and mm -hmm. how are you going to solve those exactly, problems yeah. really early on. So the problems are solved without me spending a ton of time on physical parts. Very cool. So, yeah. so, so your YouTube channel, 3D Aero mm -hmm, Ventures, yeah. this is what you cover is kind of this process of creating this as you yeah. go through there, right? Yeah, I'll do kind of a, I have to do a quick run through. I could spend hours going into detail on stuff, yep. but I do a quick run through of like, hey, here's how the design's kind of taking shape. Um, just a quick snippet of it printing. I've got four printers, you know, and a lot of the videos just printing at the same time, yeah. kind of sped up and um, and then showing a little bit of, I like to try to give a few tips with either building or my new one. I'm, I'll give some tips on how to finish a plane and paint. Okay. Um, and then I'll show my test flights, your initial prototypes. And so the one that's playing now is a comical video of me doing the initial test flight and it didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, kind of going through the, the, the learning curve of you know problem solving after you have a failure, I think is an important lesson, so. Okay, so, yeah. so the craft we have here and the one we're seeing in the video, you did this all, SolidWorks, at most of our viewers know mm -hmm. and love today, SolidWorks yep. Desktop. Now yep. you took on uh, a project to use the 3D Experience platform yep. and some of the new tools there as yep. well. Can you yeah. kind of, talk about what that process was like yeah the, the project i worked um on the, the platform was a another design it's a blue aircraft and i was doing a, a video on fpv or first person viewer so you have a little camera in the oh. inside the plane and you can wear a headset and fly it around a roof you know so you're in getting reality the complete experience of flying the aircraft exactly so i've got some footage of yeah the camera in the plane and it's one of the videos on the website that blue one there is he okay. running through it? There you go. There it is. Yeah, they'll pull this up yep. here in a little bit. So, so. Um, so as far as the platform, it's I dove into X Shape, which yep. is uh, really great for doing organic forms. And so airplanes are kind of a blend of art and technology. So I thought it was a cool way. I, I was able to just do a few components in X Shape that are more organic in nature. 
and then pull it right into SolidWorks desktop and just kind of keep working from there to do the more mechanical stuff. So you were working in a kind of a collab, what a company would do in a collaborative environment yeah. where you're, you were using the power of the sub D modeling and yeah, that shape exactly. and then you were just pulling that down into SolidWorks desktop exactly. to flush out what you probably needed for 3D printing Perfect. Right, at yep. that point, mm -hmm. right? And I, I wanted honestly to test, I didn't have high expectations of how well the cloud stuff would plug into desktop. Yep. So I wanted to test that out. And honestly, it plugged right into a, the perfect position I needed it into because I had it set up the right way and it was really fast. Cool. So yeah, I was impressed. Tools you, you want to continue using yeah, as for you sure. go through especially this process? For, especially X-Shape for kind of quickly knocking out concepts of, of organic forms. Okay. I think is really fun. You ever uh, think about doing collaborative design projects with other content creators, yeah. maybe creating another craft? So there's a Absolutely. good example where the platform might really enable that, that yeah. collaboration regardless yeah. of where you are in the world. And right? students, you know, doing something with students yep. or, or children, I think, to get them interested in the hobby and interested in, in engineering, I think there's some definitely some opportunity there. Are you doing anything with that now or no, any future plans to get involved? Head. Yeah. It'd be fun to do some, That's the next some idea, build events right? and have a bunch of 3D printers with kids and build some simple planes or something. That'd be pretty cool. That sounds really cool. Yeah. So, Eric, I have to ask, is this your first 3D? Oh, it's everybody's first 3D experience world. Yeah. Is this your first conference about SolidWorks? No, I've, I've uh, been to six or seven. So okay. I've, been using, I've been a SolidWorks user for a while. So what do you think um, of your first 3D experience world? It feels a lot bigger this year. Yeah. And, and doing, like... SolidWorks is doing a lot more important things with other organizations, nonprofits and stuff yep. that um, are kind of, shed, you're shedding light on some really cool organizations yeah. this year and it, it feels a lot bigger. So it's, it's an important event. Yeah, today we have over here in the 3D Experience for Good, they're building yep. Every Kid Gets a Robot. Yeah, I got to be part of the um, Ellen Four Foundation's yep. uh, hackathon. So I was one, one of the teams that, that came up with uh, a, a design for the hackathon. Ended up being on the winning team, which was pretty awesome. You were on the winning team, yeah, so, so we we're going to have you back here later on. We'll be on back then. later this afternoon <laughs> with our team, and I'll stay in the background so that we can they can get some spotlight, because sure. the whole team really contributed. So yeah. How was that project? It was awesome. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we, ta we'll talk about it more. Yeah, I think we'll talk yeah, a little bit more. Wanna, about that I don't want to take, take away from too that. Much into so, it. so anybody watching at home who's never been to 3D Experience World uh -huh. or an event like this, what it, what advice could you give to them? Um, just put yourself out there. Like, and if you're a content creator, like, put yourself out there. You never know what kind of relationships you're going to develop. Um, for me, I just kind of started asking people in the SolidWorks community um, for how I can contribute to you know their business and and their platform, and and ended up you know, getting me kind of to where I am today. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Eric, I want to thank you so much for joining us here yeah, at SolidWorks Live. Can, we I, got, can I plug where the people can go? Yeah, to, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had your YouTube channel oh, okay, up. Definitely cool. tell the folks where they can go learn more about what you're doing. Yeah, so youtube.com slash 3D Aeroventures. You can go watch some stuff there or 3D Aeroventures.com. I'll actually, this plane, I'll have um, the files and a build guide ready for sale so by the end of the month. Anybody so. can go download your files. Yeah, so this is it's printed on a desktop printer. Anybody that has a printer at home, just a hobbyist level printer, can print it out of PLA and parts and glue it together. So I'll sell the, the parts files as a digital product. Or four printers like what you have, like, right? Yeah, or 12. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. All right, well, Eric, thank I you thank so you much. so much for joining us. Yeah. We have a lot of content yet to cover today. We're actually going to break a little bit early today for lunch. And when we return from lunch, we're going to have an opportunity to an, uh, announce the Model Mania winners for both the traditional Model Mania and the 3D Experience Challenge we had this year mm -hmm. at 3D Experience World. Then later on this afternoon, we're going to be uh, talking with Daniel Boyer with Every Kid Gets a Robot. Suchit Jane. I think we have some customer interviews we're going to be doing. So there's still a ton of stuff. So stay tuned and we're going to break for lunch. Awesome. Thank you.